John now hailing from St. Williams, Ontario, and to his outside in the 5D, former champion here at the Speedway out of Port Colbert, Ontario, is Dave Dykstra. The final row has Adam West here for the first time in his number 30 out of Ridgetown and rounding out the field. Winner last week, his first career feature win in a sprint car. That's the real deal, Chris Steele in the number 80. So 10 cars ready to go, 10 laps, passing points to the name of the game. It's gonna be a little confusing, but the top 18 total locked in the feature. What does that mean? Either finish in the top two or move forward to get to third or fourth. That'll probably be safe enough to lock him in for the 25 lap he made later tonight. Wow, Rich, two American drivers on the front row, a New Zealander and a Canadian in the second row. Here we go, he raced number one for the Northern Summer Nationals. Dang it, down the back stretch has the lead. Here comes Jamie Collard on the top side. He's gonna try to take the second spot away from Don Adamzak. Haber Daniel takes the nine and he to the infield. Collard now to the bottom in turn three, trying to get that spot still away from Adamzak. Chris Steele has made his way up in the back row, already gotten past three cars, and trying to make his way around Costa up into the top five. That's a crucial spot, Tommy. Up from 10th to 5th right now, Chris Steele on the move, but he's got a whole bunch of red cars in front of him that he's got to deal with. Right now, Dustin Dagg is safely in the redraw. Don Adamzak would have some work to do as he started on pole back in the second. Dave Dykstra trying to catch up to Jamie Collard right now, who's holding down that third spot. Dykstra is running that middle groove in three and four, trying to make a little bit lighter on the racetrack. Way out front now is Daggett as he gets to the lap car of Mike Farrell. Again, we're gonna take about three or four cars from each of the heat races. So Chris Steele might be just doing that, stealing a position from one of these top four machines as he is flying through the pack for one more spot. Might put him in the redraw. Daggett is way out front in that 2M. We're used to seeing that situation. Adam Zach in the second spot in the 21X, then Pollard, but here comes Dykstra on the bottom, Rich. Yeah, well, Dykstra obviously has a few more laps on the speedway than uh, Daggett and uh, the 21 Don Adamzak do to this point this season. Daggett having no issues with it whatsoever, though. We saw the top be good in hot laps, and Tommy is continuing on right now for Double D. Yeah, this track in different shape than it's been all year. A cushion on it tonight, it's been dry and slick up to this point, so a lot faster. And look at Daggett now splitting the lap cars as he's taking no prisoners with that big lead. And still that battle for third is the key one on the speedway. Dykstra to the inside of Jamie Collard, unable to complete the pass there. Dykstra, who started at eight, one more spot might put him in a redraw. He overcooks it though, down the back stretch. Chris Steele pulls to the inside, and car number 80 goes down for spot number four, coming to the white flag. Well, Daggett gets the heat race win. Second will be Adamzak, then it's Pollard, then Steele and Dykstra. That's how they will finish. Dykstra just nipping Steele at the line for that fourth spot. So there's your winner of heat race number one here at the Northern Seminar Nationals, the 2M of Dustin Daggett. I just don't like new parts. Farger obviously with a great starting spot here tonight. This will certainly help him. And then we got a lot of the Ontario guys going to try and go at it here to try and get into this mix behind Justin Farger. So a lot of passing points on the way. We are set to roll off as Golder. Still no fire under the hood of the 30G and a disappointing start to his night for Stephen Golder. So they will more than likely give him a bit of help, get him back to the infield, and we should see the white flag this time up four. Now we're going to go green flag racing this time by Clint. Grimesdale Racing Products brings you heat race number two. Barger gets on the gas. Mahoney and Dempster second and third. Look at Cunningham go to the bottom of the 71. He'll take a couple as Jonathan tests the outside of turn two. Yellow on the speedway. Didn't like that start, so we'll try it again. And they're going to move the front row back one. We saw this once last week, Clint, where... The front row did not start properly, so the second row gets the bump up. 
So Barger not liking that. He's going to try and protest it, but they will put him back. As we do in sprint cars, if the front row does not go together, it will switch lanes with the front and second row, as you see. These guys already making their way through to fight their way up into position here and get set to roll once again in qualifying race number two. Yeah, and don't forget to get your souvenir programs. Girls going through the stands, $2 a copy. Chance to win some prizes at intermission, so get yourself a souvenir program. Also, get your 50-50 tickets. I'm sure it's going to be a large amount tonight after $1,500 last week. And a good crowd here tonight. It's going to be a good one, so make sure you stop those sellers that are going by in the bright pink t-shirts. Get yourself a 50-50 ticket. Side of the 67, Dempster has issues with run, running the one-way radio, so they have to use the old-fashioned hand signals, and sometimes it's a bit difficult to relay the message to Keith Dempster. They've got it sorted out now. The field will bunch up and should come out of four ready to rock and roll. Greg, over to you for the call to get us going. We'll try it again here at Grindsdale Racing Products. Heat number two, Chris Duran and Keith Dempster on the front rows. We see the green flag. Clark are going to rock it down three wide into turn one. Cunningham goes to the inside and he'll make a move down low, cannot do that. Here comes Dempster back on the inside. Dempster down the bottom side where he likes to run. Like he said last week, he's good early on in the evening. But he likes the bottom group. He goes wheel to wheel with Justin Barger through one and two. Wow, not sure if they hit or not there. That was certainly close from my perspective down here. Very difficult to tell. Dempster again, taking a shot here at Barger on the inside of turn three. Across the strike, Justin Barger leads that lap. But Keith Dempster is not going away. He's down on that bottom groove where he likes to be. Now Barger will stretch it down the back stretch. Barger, you'd expect him to run from the pole and take this qualifying heat with Dempster up to second, Cunningham third. Now Mahoney a bit loose out of four with Kretschka starting to hunt him down. Well, Barger leads this one over Dempster. And then it's Cunningham, Warren Mahoney fourth, fifth is Mikey Kretschka, sixth Derek Johnson, seventh Chris Durant, eighth Dick Mahoney, and ninth is Stephen Goldner. Barger to the high side of turn two with Dempster a long ways back. Cunningham starting to chop away at the distance between himself and second place, Keith Dempster. Cross legs up from the driver out of Montrose, New York in the 5B as he leads him down the back chute. And the battle now heating up for the second spot is Keith Dempster on the high side, feeling a challenge from Travis Cunningham. Cunningham to the low end here, down low along the rail, but the top side momentum pays off for Dempster as he just keeps it by a couple of feet here away from Cunningham. Continue at it, down the back stretch, Dempster up high, Cunningham down low as they work it through three and four. We're coming up on one to go that time by. Dempster and Cunningham still out there as Barger putting cars laps down, locking them down in fine fashion here with two to go for Justin Barger. Leader working now on the lap car of Chris Durand at the 67. Then it's a straightaway back to Keith Dempster second and Travis Cunningham third with a white flag this time by for Justin Barger. Look at the battle, it's gonna be two cars side by side. They're gonna split Mahoney, no, they both go below. Dick Mahoney there in turn one, that was could have been disastrous. Now Cunningham with the big ERD power, rockets up on the inside. Checkers out for Justin Barger. He'll win Grisdale Racing Products in race number two. Travis Cunningham, second, Keith Dempster, third, then it's Warren Mahoney, fourth, Mikey Krutchka, fifth. Sixth will be Derek Jonathan, seventh. Will be the 67 to Chris Duran, then eight, Nick Mahoney, and then of course the DNS for, uh, pardon me, Steve Goldner in the 30G. He'll round out the nine car field. So for Mikey Krutchka, a flat front tire on the 0-1 of Mikey Krutchka on the left front hit the turn one wall on the inside. But uh, for Mikey Krutchka, he passed a few cars there, so it's, it's going to help him a bit. And Here's the way they're going to go for the mid-heat race. A pair of 11s on the front row. Rookie competitor in the 11Z, Zach Zuki out of St. Catharines on the pole position to his outside. In the number 11 out of Keister Center, that is Jamie Turner. Row number two on the inside, driving the 52 out of Alden, New York, is the straight shooter Scott Kruder. And his outside in the 3R, that is Shane Ross. Row number three, a pair of 51s. Matt Wilson next of Dane Nida out of Michigan. And the 35 of Jared Zimbardi in Little Valley, New York. 
In the fourth row will be the 10th seed Bob Crawford out of Sutton. And lined up to his outside in number 40. That'll be another rookie competitor, Sammy Stice. Completing the field is the 66, Frank Baranowski. Here we go, Rich. As you mentioned, a pair of 11s on the front row with Zach Zumpy, the rookie, doing a good job up there as he holds on to that one. Got a little squirrely out of turn two. And Scott Cruder takes advantage of that situation and comes out with the lead. Cruder is your heat race leader. Last week he won a B-Main and then went backwards in the feature. Jared Zimbardi on the move though. Up on the top side goes the juice. He's up in a spot number two as the umpire state holds on to those positions. Scott Cruder out front in the 52. Zimbardi second. Jamie Turner back to third. Then it's Dave Nida who got the runner up finish on opening night here. Behind him, Zumpy holding off Shane Ross, another rookie competitor for now. All Scott Cruder in the 52. Again, all heat race winners are in the outlaw style redraw. But the battles for third and fourth may put a driver in the show, like Jamie Turner or Dane Nina. How about Shane Ross on the outside of Zumpy as he's in the spot number five? Shane Ross has a former Dustin Daggett machine out there, that 3R, and we saw what Daggett did out there on the top side, and that's what Ross is trying to do as well. He has some ground to make up if he wants to catch up to Dane Nida, though, that's as exactly. Cruder continues to hold off Zimbardi. Turner slides off the end of turn four, and Nida takes that spot. And that may be a critical spot as Nida started in fifth. He's up in the third. That could get him close to the outlaw style redraw. Here comes Shane Ross closing in on Jamie Turner for position number four. They work through three and four, and again, Shane Ross has to get up to fourth to have any chance to make the redraw. Bob Crawford with an issue. He went pit side. We stay green, Tommy. Sammy Stice having a little bit of issues down there in turn four, running the bottom side. Schroeder still out front, the white flag in the air. Zimbardi not able to make up any ground right now. Still a few laps left to roll through the speedway. Dane Nida just in his own little world in third. We'll get one more spot with locking in the redraw. As it sits right now, you would see the 52 and the 35 finding their way onto the front stretch later on tonight. With two more laps left to go, Zimbardi gaining ground. Kruder uh, doesn't need to win this heat race, but then again, he doesn't want to lose it with the white flag here. 10 lap heat race up here tonight at the Northern Summer Nationals. We're used to the eight lap races, and Kruder using the extra distance on this race to extend his lead out front. He's gonna come around and get the heat race win in. The third heat race of the night, second will be Zimbardi. Third will be Dane Nida. Fourth at the line, it will be Jamie Turner. And fifth is Shane Ross. Zach Zuby, final car on the lead lap in the 11th Z with Baranowski, Stice, and Crawford complete the field. So heat race win in the redraw will be the 52 of Scott Kruder. Second across the line, the 35 of Jared Zimbardi. I guarantee we'll see him in the redraw as well. In the show will likely be day nine up from fifth to third. I think those are the only three cars you're gonna see from that heat race headed in to the feature and not going directly to be made. Quickly rolling through these heats, one more. Our best Western Karen Croft heat race, number four. White flag will come out from starter Dale Shunneman. So last we heard Greg Jim who looked for a ride. Over in the pits, we heard rumors that he was going to be taking Hot laps and show up points in the Alain Bergeron car. Whether he comes out to compete in it, we'll have to get back to you on that. We're getting set to roll here off turn four, Greg. They're on it and away we go. Green flag out and right off the bat, Tom Hoopin and jumps down to the inside. He'll hold the lead. As on the top side, it's Kyle Moffat in that Houston trucking ride. Meanwhile, problems for Jim Linger down the back stretch. Wow, he nearly got up. He got it. Things could have been a lot worse for that car as they worked their way down the back straightaway. Hooping it again on a tear. Rand working the inside groove. Rand has done very nicely these past two weeks on that bottom groove after having such a nasty crash. Back on June the 8th, he found something that works for him. He's running in the second spot. Hooping it in that five-star racing Crocs car, streaking away from the rest of them as they come down the back chute. Here comes Hallen working the top side. And it'll be Moffat pulling right up in front of him into the high groove. 
lap traffic already playing a factor in Steve Lyons, who uh, he's got some laps in vintage modifieds is where you've probably heard that name before. As Tom Hoopin will slip down to the inside of him. Yeah, Hoopin is fighting his way gingerly underneath the Lions 75. Ran and Moffitt, Howland, they'll all get through. Top four around the lap car, down the back shoe, right at the top of the rim is the Hoopin 27, and now yellow out. Yellow flag out for Jim Winger up in corner number four. Go single file past the OntarioLevel.com restart cone on the front stretch with Tom Hoopin leading the way in the five star racing products car number 27H. A first pin for that chassis. Yeah, I was teasing Jim Hoop last week. I said, You don't win, you give your winnings to your brother. How's that for family battles? Green comes out and up we go. Hoopin again. Oh, and got tangled up at the top side there and they all had to pile it. Down the back stretch they work with Tom Hoopin in your leader. Tyler Rand right now sitting in the second spot. The smoking tea kettle on the top side. That is Kyle Moffat and he's feeling the heat right now from Brian Howland. Howland was close to getting into the side of Moffat as they came off turn four and that was very close. They keep going at it, Howland again, trying to get around the top side of the Moffat 7 as they work their way down the back chute into turn three. As the leader comes across the strike that time to complete lap number seven, three to go. Tyler Rand in second, and Brian Howland continues to pick off cars as now he'll work on the back end of the 84 of Tyler Rand. Rand streaks down to the end group. He makes that one pay off, and out of four, Howland trying to come up on him as they work their way down the chute into one. Side by side through corner one and two. Going down the back stretch, Howland has the lead. Or pardon me, the second spot rather. The leader at the stripe was Tom Hoopin and he takes the white flag. Last time around for leader Hoopin and he's got about a half straight away or almost a half track lead I should say over the Howland 51. Rand still holding on to third, fourth is Moffitt, fifth Latticeur. Checkers down for the winner, Tommy Hoopin. Second in the line will be Brian Howland, third Tyler Rand, fourth will be Kyle Moffat, fifth Lee Latticeur, and then sixth it looks like will be the two of Brad Lodge, Jim Muncy, Steve Lyons, and Jim Linger will round out the field. Fifth and final qualifying heat set to come out, presented by Awesome Racewear. Top two from that last heat race. It looks like uh, they'll have no trouble making it to the redraw, so there's about two spots left, and it'll come up in this final heat race. It looks like Tyler Rand has put himself in the show. It looks like Kyle Moffitt maybe had to be made despite finishing in spot number four. All right, so we're ready to go here with the fifth and final qualifying heat ride by Awesome Race. we got Chris Piro up here in the tower, and. Uh, this is your first chance to announce a sprint car event. Dude, I am as green as green can be at a sprint car event. I go straight line, but in circles, I'm running in circles. Two tank on two times. Any drive. Top fuel, drink, top fuel, funny car driver starting at the back of the pack, Greg. They work it down the back stretch. It's a gaggle of cars as you see that 8 B of eight burst run. That is. Bergeron, the team that made the move down the back stretch. You see the car in the back. That is Jim Hoopin, and it was hit right in four points. Meanwhile, at the front, Stan Zaken with a great race. Petron looking like he might have some problems out there. Bumped up one bump. It looks like he's bumping around outside the track. Working back down the back stretch. Zaken now feeling the heat from Mitch Brown on the bottom side and Glenn Styers up top as the uh, Sweeken fly on the current point leader works it on the leader, Stan Zaken. Look at Glenn Styers, proves his colors right there, down there in the track. Third position, bumping up, Petrograd having problems, back off, back on. Down in eighth position right now, Greg. Glenn Styers hooked up in that high line, that's where he likes to run, that's where he's been good all year long, and he's to the top spot over Mitch Brown. Stan Sankin in third, and it's Elaine Bergeron, Todd Hoddick, Jim Hoopman, and Todd Mahoney, and Bruce Petrograd. There it is, look at Glenn Styers right up to the top of the pack, Greg. Through this one, five 
with in five to go in this awesome race where the event the final qualifier for the sprint cars here tonight. Styers leads the way over Brown and Bougeron. Pentagon still sending number eight. Kind of pumped in the hole in the track tonight, but obviously no stranger to open wheel racing. Cruz gets by Connor Mahoney that time by, so he gets one car past as we see a smoker going down the back stretch for 94 of Stan Zankin. As he will continue on with Glenn Steyer's a leader, and he really cleans it up as Stan Zankin drops the smoke down the front stretch. Pentagon pumping up to number seven, Glenn Steyer's number zero, still your leader out there on the race track tonight. Black flag coming up for Stan Zankin in the 94. He is clearing away for the mosquitoes to uh, dissipate it, but nonetheless, Glenn Steyer's will lead it for Mitch Brown here on the final lap, checkered flag coming out. Looks like Steyer's gonna take the checkered flag, comes around. Well, there's Pentagon going by in the back. Hey, Glenn Steyer's your winner. Steyer's wins. Awesome. Awesome race for a heat race. Number five, Elaine Bergeron, second mid round. Third, fourth is Todd Hobbick, fifth, Jim Hoover, sixth through Pentagon. Connor Mahoney, eighth is Stan Zakin and Jim Porter, who did not make the call in the DNS at the end of the night. So, Chris, I'll tell you what, Cruz Pendergon, he's uh, he's a, a drag racer, but he did a nice job, kept the car clean, got a pass under his belt, and he's ready for the V-Main. Yeah, he sure is. He uh, started back in the pack, made his way up, finished sixth. Tomorrow afternoon, he's going to be going 300 miles an hour in just under four seconds, Greg. That's going to be crazy. Tell the folks about the show tomorrow. I'll tell you what we got just down the road at Toronto Motorsports Park, Yuga Dragway. We have nitro cars. We have six nitro cars. We have the top fuel funny cars of the Pentagon Brothers going head to head several times into the evening, gonna light the pipes, gonna set the world on fire, gonna rotate the earth. We've got head to head jet car action at Toronto Motorsports Park. We've got pro modifieds in the house, 3,000 horsepower door slammers. We've got top sportsman cars. We've got hundreds and hundreds of incredible fast cars, the tens of thousands of horsepower. Transfer through this B main and in is Chris Barrow of RPM Magazine. Bruce Pedregon's in a good spot right now. He needs to be in the top four to transfer to tonight's A-Main. Yeah, starting number two out there, looking good. Going to come under the, check, come under the green flag in just a few seconds by the looks of it. So they rumble down the back stretch. Todd Hoddick, Cruz Pedregon on that front row. Let's see if he can get it done here in this first B-Main. Four spots on the line for the big dance. I'll tell you what, he had a little problem in his first seat, but he's starting in the right position now. Take it over right on turn one, Greg. Nice power move by Cruz Pedregon as he goes to the top spot. Jamie Turner moves to the inside of Todd Hoddick for second. I'll tell you what, this is exciting stuff. This is my first time doing this. I am excited about this. See if Pedregon out there just adds to it all. Pedregon, your leader. Turner in second. Then it's Lee Latticer and Todd Hoddick fighting side by side for the third and fourth spot. Those would be your transfer cars. Pentagon getting challenged for hanging on to it in turn one again. Jamie Turner down to the inside of Pedregon. The Wiley veteran will slip up into the lead. Pedregon, though, still in one of those transfer positions. Look at the move by Turner around that corner. Tuck over on Pedregon. Now he's playing catch up. Pedregon second, but he's going to feel the heat now from Lee Latasur as he's down on the inside. The driver out of Alexandria, Ontario slips into second. Here comes Todd Hoddick and the Batman. Adam West is the man on the outside looking in. Latasur with a power move as something went wrong in the 11 of Turner off the corner, but he's still under power. Just took a little high line up there and got past. Latticer, your leader. Turner, second. Third right now is Adam West, who's on a charge looking. And now Cruz Pedregon slips at quarter two, opens the door for Todd Hotting. Comes back down on the line, tries to gain it back, but still back in number five position. Halfway through this one, six laps to plate, six laps to go as your leader works by the 15 of Mike Farrell. Second place contested, Adam West has grabbed it. He's into second, Jamie Turner in third, and Cruz Pendergon continues to hold down fourth. Five laps to 
go, folks. Looks like Petrodon's having a little problems keeping up with the pack tonight. Wonder what's going to happen tomorrow when he's behind that 300 horsepower, 300 mile an hour beast. He'll feel a whole lot more comfortable, I'm sure, but he's doing it all right here tonight. He's in a transfer spot. He's got the final position, but here comes Todd Hoddick in the 49. Drops down to hang on to his position. Coming this time by for Lee Latasur in the 51. It'll be two laps to go for Lee Latasur. Second right now. Well, yellow is going to come out as Cruz Pedragon slows. And Bob Crawford in the 10C slows here on the front stretch. Couple problems out here right now on the track. Running under yellow. Just two laps to go. The report is the 75 bang wall. Yeah, you see the right front down on Cruz Pedragon. There it is, flat. Clinton Jeffrey, you saw it down there in the infield. I was watching the battle cruise. Just he's been diving a little too hard in the one. Big disappointment for Pentagon down there. That doesn't happen tomorrow. Doing a great job here for your first uh, go around in circles. Are you dizzy yet, Chris? I'm not dizzy. I'm loving every minute of it. Well, Greg, I'm over here. Pentagon back out to take the track from number nine position. Here he comes on the white flag. Well, we're getting ready to go back. Glenn Styers, what did you tell Cruz as he was getting ready to go back out there? He was coming down too low. I wanted him to stay high all the way through the corner, and uh, he was a lot faster when he stayed high. He led, I don't know how many laps, but he did amazing. Keep learning fast. Green flag is back out. to you with the other green. All right, Glenn, green flag is back out. Lee Lattice are leading the way. The lap car of Jim Muncy between he and Adam Miles. And trouble up in the corner as John Rivers Sr. loops around. And that will bring out the yellow flag, so that's good for Cruz Pedragon as he'll get by one more car on this restart. I'll tell you what, I'm amazed at how tight they go around the track and the speeds they go around and they do not connect very often. No, it's a game of chess, high speed chess out there. And we're gonna see some more action with two laps to go. The final four spots of this B main on the line and then four more in the next B main. Second, third, and fourth, all right there, wheel to wheel, as Todd Hoddick looks to the inside of Adam West. Meanwhile, Jamie Turner scoots by for second. Went down to the checkered flank this time. Lee Lattiser out of Alexandria, Ontario. He will come down off a of corner four and take the checkered flag in the first B main. Second will be Jamie Turner. And at the line, third will go to, I believe it was Adam West. And then Todd Hoddick will grab the final transfer position. Chris Duran, Stan Sinkin, John Burbridge Sr. will all go home, as well as our lap down cars. So there's your winner out of Alexandria, Ontario. General Lee, Lee Latasur will come home the winner. Jamie Turner, second, Adam West, third, and Todd Hoddick, fourth. Those four cars transfer to tonight's A main event. Another B main set and ready to come out onto the track. And uh, Chris, it's been a great uh, honor to have you here up in Coatesville, New Zealand's Harvard Daniels, the nine and Z in his outside the F37 of Jim Porter out of Grand Island, New York. Steve Goldner also out there in the 30G out of Elmer. And we do not see the 8H of Jim Hoopin in. 12 cars, 12 laps, we're underway. And leading him through turn number one and two. Looks like Mahoney's gonna get the momentum. Oh, Haver Daniels goes for a spin down here in the 9NZ. We're gonna re-rack this one and start all over again. Over to Warren Mahoney. We will re rack, restack, double file since no laps are officially in the books. Winner of this meeting will start 20th on the future field tonight 22nd for second, 24th for third, 26th for the fourth and final transfer spot in this second of two beats. First trip to Ashwigan this year for Lodge and Mahoney. 
get ready to bring him back to life on a turn number four time. Here they come, green flag once again, complete restart here. Jesse Costa gets a good jump into 52, and we're underway. Moffitt in the seven, taking the early lead. Kyle Moffitt down on the inside, took it four wide. Look at the move by Jesse Costa in the 52X. He's up in the second spot, battle on for third now. Moffitt tries to get to the inside lane, Lodge is already there. Wheel to wheel off the turn before, and Lodge is back in the third. Mahoney out front in the 25 right now. Costa in second in the 52. Lodge in the two, holding down the third spot. And now Moffitt gets around him. Those are your four transfer cars. A bunch of cars behind them side by side trying to get up into the fight. Yeah, Lodge really slipped up the corner there. That is going to open up the door for Shane Ross and the 79 to take out. Mahoney really has that wing slot to slip back. He's got the power to the rear end of that car and is closing in three car scramble for the final transfer. Mahoney out front by a good margin in the 25 right now. Got that wing slid back, looking for traction on the rear wheels. Not really a whole lot of contention going on for the transfer spots right now. Ross has it right now in the 3R. And yeah, Ross holding on to that position. Lodge just not quick enough off the corner. Be able to hold on to the spot. Battle on to the spot. Number uh, six right now. As Mahoney's up to the top. Golders got a good one. Baranowski down to the inside. Baranowski looking fast here tonight. One of the faster nights we've seen him have so far this weekend. Last time we saw him here, he was upside down on the front straightaway. So good to see the driver of the 66 back here. And right now he and Brad Lodge trying to chase down the three-hour Ross. Look at this, Baranowski one spot away, Tommy. Put it to the inside of Brad Lodge with a sweet move down the inside. Still looking for his first ever top 10. Halfway this time by, six laps in, six to go. And now Mahoney around once again, five laps to go. He's way out front in the 25. No issue right now for Warren Mahoney, other than lap traffic. And he's gonna soon get out of it. Cost to save for a second, pop in the third. Shane Ross is support from Baranowski is coming. He still has four and a half laps left to go. Baranowski running the bottom groove, one of the few guys able to make that work right now, and he's chasing down the rookie, Shane Ross. Still four laps left to go, lots of time as that final transfer spot Ooh. is still up for grabs. You see that, Tommy, though? Baranowski really backpedaled off the corner, lost a ton of time to Shane Ross. Steve Golder doing the complete opposite, running up on the top of the racetrack, and he is pedaling the 32. Mahoney gets the two to go signal now in the 25 car. Got cars side by side in front of him that he's going to have to put a lap down before the end of this. Yeah, and they're going to be a Mahoney, another Mahoney in Grand Lodge. Like you said, he might have to get by him before this one is over, even though he's got almost a full back stretch of room. White flag says Neil Simon one more time around for the Wiley one. Well, none of these guys have mirrors, so they don't know what's behind them. Mahoney's got to keep his foot to the floor and try to get around this slower traffic if he can through turns three and four the final time. Mahoney, Warren Mahoney in the 25 will come around and get the win. Give a call to Jesse Costa. He'll make his first door that someone has in his name. And he puts in the second spot. Third to Moffitt in the show. A nice job, Shane Ross. In fourth, as is going to be one spot out. Goldner in sixth. Those two drivers with a valiant effort come up a little bit short. But right now, they're all in one row in the front of this pack. Greg Kelder, what a beautiful field we have on hand here tonight. Folks on your feet, wave these drivers on. Four wide, the salute to you, the fans. Four of the best here from the Northeast. The Core Pack Merchandising Sprint Cars, the Patriot Sprint Tour, the Southern Ontario Sprints and the Empire Super Sprints. We've got them all here tonight. And they salute you with a four wide lap. And as they work back in a two by two formation on the outside of row number two, out of Grimsby, Ontario, driving the trailers by Jim Gray, BMB decals, ERD, Infant 71, play. A four race series brought to you by Jones Brown Motorsport Insurance. We'll go down to South Buxton Raceway tomorrow night, and then in August, we'll do two more rounds here at Osh Weekend and then back to South Buxton. 
27 of the best are ready to go at it for 25 laps. Glenn Styers has been hot. He is on the pole. Chris Steele hot off his first win last week. They go two by two down the backstretch. Ladies and gentlemen, you came looking for a show. Well, here you go. It's time to end all the anticipation as we bring to you our feature presentation. Wing me and coming to Sherman's Green. We are underway with the Northern Summer Nationals. Styers wants to get up to the top. He slides way up there, but Steele was ready for it. Down to the inside he goes. And Marty's on the move with the 35 as they scramble down the back stretch. Chris Steele did all he could to put on the, the foot on the binders to get out of the way of Glenn Styers. He'll dive down to the inside. Styers back up top where he likes to run, and he holds down the lead. The man on the move is Scott Kruder, but he gets slowed up on the back stretch. Kruder had a pull, had a steam working off the top, and you might have to use it now before it's gone. Steyer's definitely using the top side of the racetrack. Watered it down just for this reason, but he got over the berm and Steele's coming back after him. Yeah, he really got squirrely there. As you say, he got over the berm. Chris Steele's right there keeping him in sight. A gaggle of cars going through one and two, and somehow they all clear. You know, Don Adamsack right now is cracking in the top ten, which means Howland and Daggett are going backwards. Very interesting to see for two former Northern Nationals winners. After a good lap by Scott Kruder, he drops back. Now as Travis Cunningham and the Lane Bergeron shoot by him. Jared Zimbardi right now sitting just outside the top five. Travis Cunningham up to third in the Northern Summer Nationals race here last year. He led a, a ton of that race. Came home and up with a top five. The leader, Glenn Styers, will be into lap traffic before you know it. The first car will be his team car, Cruz Pedragon, who was added as a promoter's option. He is the first car to be lapped by Glenn Styers. You see those uh, Schwick and Speedway cars down in turn number three. Styers not going to have a lot of problems because very few drivers are running the extreme top side of the Speedway. Dustin Daggett on the move as he is working to the top side of the juice. Jared Zimbardi and closing in on Elaine Bergeron and Scott Kruder as he dives down low in corner one. I tell you, right now, Greg, a ton of drivers missed it. Dustin Daggett started fifth. He is back slowed a little bit. He's making up for it now. Justin Barger started ninth. He is back right now in the 12th position. So I don't think it's a situation of a car coming in later as we may have a battle for the race lead. Chris Steele is drawn in closer. Two lap cars in between he and leader Glenn Styers. Styers trapped right behind the seven of Kyle Moffat, and that allows Chris Steele to close the gap some more. And a spin right in front, and it is Styers. Styers spun around. Caution is out. Costa also involved. So how will they call that, Rich? Glenn Styers loops it around, keeps it going. Caution had flown. Guys, I cannot believe that Glenn Styers did not get upside down there. He was up, uh, up in the air there, rode up on the back of one of those slower cars, and it looked like for sure he was going to get upside down. This single file restart, so many cars going on the lead lap. We know Glenn Styers has a capable car, but he's going to have a lot of cars to drive through. And we've already seen him this year come from a B main to get up to the front of the track, so, uh, to the front of the pack, so I'm sure if anyone can do it here up in that high groove, it's Glenn Styers. He is just hooked up this year for some reason. Uh, he says he's very happy to be back running up front. Guys, keep an eye on that 8P of Elaine Bergeron in the fifth spot. He's been fast here before. Lots of laps here at our Shweek and keep an eye on that 8P. Single file past the restart cone. Chris Steele will lead them down and we're back underway. And it's the 52 of Kruder jumping up. He wants to go on top shelf. The leaders stay on the bottom and it's going to be a new leader out of turn number two Cunningham. Steele comes up. Kruder nowhere to go. Gets clipped. It looks like the front end's folded up. And he goes hard into the infield wall, out of harm's way, no need for a caution, as Travis Cunningham is the new leader. Wow, what a turn of events there for Scott Cruder. He looked so good coming off at corner two, and now we're still under green, and he's out of the race. Travis Cunningham, meanwhile, leads the way. Chris Steele up top in second, Dustin Daggett in third. Then it's the Juice, Jared Zimbardi in fourth, and Elaine Bergeron rounding up the top five. And a hard bump on the cushion for Dustin Daggett. As he now rides in third, you've got to wonder what the contact did to the right rear of Chris Steele's number 80. 
He is right up on the rim off of turn number four, and you gotta feel like somebody's gonna plant it in the turn four wall at some point before this one's over. Steele hits the berm, but it still is very quick off the corner. Two of the regular runners here at the Speedway, running one and two, the great show, Daggett in third, and then a great fight right now, Rich, for that fourth spot. New leader, Steele takes it back, the first lap that he will officially lead around the Speedway. And he gets it done on the top side, but look out, here comes Dustin Daggett. He gets by Cunningham and now sets his sight on the real deal. Well, Dustin Daggett trying to steal the show in this one. Driver of the 2M with 10 career feature wins here at the Speedway. Cross flags are out, 13 in, 12 laps to go as the leaders work down the back stretch. The next lap car in line will be Kyle Moffat as Dustin Daggett slips down to the inside of Chris Steele. Trying to force the issue and he will. Daggett in the race lead. Steele, though, right back down to the bottom side. He's got Travis Cunningham in tow, but Daggett so hooked up in that top side, he'll pull away from the 80. Well, last year's Northern Summer Nationals saw seven different leaders in the event. We're up to four now. And nearly contact with Kyle Moffitt. We've seen that in the Northern Summer Nationals here before. And for the 2M of Dustin Daggett, he's looking for redemption. Remember, Rich, we went to South Buxton, and he was DQ'd in the feature, and he makes contact with Jesse Costa. goes off the track. Chris Steele and Travis Cunningham go by. You do not want to be the leader of this race. Unbelievable. Dustin Daggett and Jesse Costa come together for the second time in this event. Eight laps apart. The leader makes contact with the 52. Jesse Costa. Costa not happy about it. Daggett will have to go to the back as well. Clinton Jeffrey heading down towards the scene, and uh, man, he Daggett hit his right rear on the left front of Costa, and he's lucky he didn't go over. Get back out on the track, ready for this restart. And with these incidents taking place in the lap traffic, and the leader spinning out, once again, all the cars on the racetrack are on the lead lap. Big single file formation, white flag is out. Chris Steele trying to pick up a big win, and it would be probably even a bigger win for Travis Cunningham as it would be his first career feature victory with the sprint car. Third is Jared Zimbardi, fourth Brian Holland, and back up to fifth Justin Bargraf, who's sitting back about 12th, 13th at some point in this race. He's made some adjustments on that ride. Jamie Pollard runs in sixth, and they're starting in position 14. Lee Lottesor from the B main from 19 up to seventh. And from 20th to 8th, also, also in 12 spots, Warren Mahoney. So those drivers definitely on the move. Everybody's on the lead lap, and we are back underway. Green flag back out. Chris Steele will lead them down into corner one. The top two go to the bottom groove. The juice, Jared Zimbardi in third. He'll shoot around the top and go for second. Boy, Barger really missed it in the middle there. Look at Jared Zimbardi up on the top shelf. He's going to get a lot of momentum off this fourth quarter. And a new race leader, it's Jared Zimbardi. Zimbardi, your leader, Steele in second. And here comes Brian Howland now. He did not run well at all last Friday night, nope. but he is looking superb now into the top three. He had a different car last week. It was a bent car from the uh, flip at Granby. But ju the juice, Jared Zimbardi, has had a tumultuous start to the 2012 season after last year's championship run. Would really like to break through tonight. This is his first sprint car race ever without his dad here. Yeah, that might be a bad sign for Tim. He may, ne may never come again. Jared Zimbardi <laughs> leads with seven laps to go. And he really came out of nowhere, didn't he? I mean, we have not talked about him much at all. And now Zimbardi just laying the hammer down to the rest of the field. And credit to Chris Steele and Travis Cunningham, the local drivers, hanging in tough against some of the very best here in the Northeast. Steele holds down second, and Cunningham right now still in the top five. Steele still holding on to second, as you mentioned. Justin Barger starting to hit his marks again. Up in a position number four, setting the slide job up on Brian Howland as there are just five more laps left to go. Ben on for third. Five laps to go, the big high five from Dale Shuneman as Zimbardi works through lap traffic. He'll get by Kyle Moffat first. Chris Steele second, Brian Howland third, and Justin Barger in fourth. Jamie Collard now has cracked the top five, and he had a rough go. And now Don Adamzak will loop it around a corner two. And the caution will fly with four to go. So on lap 21, the 21 comes around. Four laps left to go, which might seem like a bad thing for Jared Zimbardi, 
However, I believe there's going to be lap cars in the mix between first and at least, uh, well, yeah, between first and second. We've seen the bottom be so productive all race long. Tommy, every one of these restarts, though, that top side, somebody has made it work, and that time it was Jared Zimbardi track and had checked out from the rest of the pack. We mentioned it while the cars were at speed. Uh, Jared and his crew tonight are without the services of his father, Tim, uh, who has been part of the operation, well, obviously, since he started when Tim was back racing. So I said, uh, when was the last time his dad wasn't here? He said, like, 10 years ago, Jared was racing for 10. So I don't know what's going to happen if uh, Jared wins tonight, if Tim's going to be allowed to come back. But So four laps left to go, Zimbardi leads, and again, the second place car is Chris Steele, who is third in line, then Howland, Barger, Cunningham, your top five. Nice run for Warren Mahoney and Lee Latticer to the SOS contingents up there, just outside the top five as we get back to green flag racing. And everybody going up top now, except for Barger. He goes back down there again, that thing's still not working down there. Nida up the racetrack, back about sixth place, as the battle might be on for second. Chris Steele able to hold it on the cushion right now with three to go. Zimbardi checking out off that last restart. Right now, Chris Steele holding down the second spot. Brian Hallen in third. Fourth is Justin Barger in the battle for fifth. Has yeah. three or four cars going at it. Dean Knight already in the mix. A lot of sewer with a great run, though. He's got that car figured out. He might crack the top five before it's over as there's two more laps left to go. Jared Zimbardi with less than a half a mile here on a Friday night cruise as he looks for probably his second biggest career win. Well, white flag coming out this time from starter Dale Shuneman. One more trip around for the juice as he looks to capture the first round of the Northern Summer Nationals. Zimbardi had a win here in 2010, a win here last year, and looking to get on the scoreboard in 2012. Again, it's been a tough start to the year for the defending Patriot champion, but he works it off at turn number four in his $3,000 Richard. Jared Zimbardi picks up the double checkers. Steal a good run in second, third to Howland, fourth to Barger, fifth to Collard. Lottasaur from the B up to six, seventh to Nida, and eighth, Glenn Steyers makes it back up there before this race is still over. Then you've got Dykstra and Cunningham rounding out the top ten. The Juice, Jared Zimbardi, after starting in position number seven, kind of crept his way up to spot number three, and on the last 16 restart, rockets around the outside and easily picks up his first win of the season. Zimbardi, who was a Patriot regular, but has also been a core pack regular here at the Speedway, has made a start here in the first three events. Finishes a seventh, fifth, and sixth. He's got a win on the scoreboard now. Four different winners in as many core pack sprint races here this season. And headed into victory lane with Chris Steele. Hey, Steele, a good run. Coming home to spot number two a week off. His win and Brian Holland in third. A tough run through the field for him. We'll send it down to Victory Lane. Tommy, Clint, and Greg are down there. Don't, Don't forget, forget fans. We <laughs> Jared Zimberti getting the helmet off this feature win assures him a guaranteed starting spot in the Canadian Sprint Car Nationals coming up in September. Now he's got the helmet off. Put your hands together for Jared Zimbardi. There you go, and Jared just says, man, it's tough to win these things, and you saw a lot of stuff going on in front of you before that one was over. Yeah, yeah, we definitely got some breaks there. We had some fast cars just get tangled up, and I knew we were getting better and better and better toward the end, and then right, right in the last uh, 10 laps, it uh, was just on rails, and it was like driving down the highway. So I got I to gotta give it to uh, my team, Tony. I got to thank his Uncle Joe for driving up. I wish my dad and my parents were here tonight, but they're in Colorado on vacation, so uh, we're, uh, we're ecstatic. This is awesome. 
Oh, you've been here all year so far for the first few weeks of the season and the track a little bit different tonight. Talk about some of the changes you had to make. Yeah, really, uh, obviously it's to my liking. Uh, I always like to run the top, but um, it, it had been slick early on, but I think if they keep doing what they're doing here, at least uh, I think I can say that for everybody. I, I mean, there were a lot of fast cars and there was a lot of passing, so uh, the fans got to enjoy that. And if they can nail this down every week, you're going to see some really good racing here. A guaranteed starting spot in the Canadian Sprint Car Nationals as a result of this feature win here tonight, and that's a little bit of insurance for you. Oh yeah, it definitely is because it takes a lot of pressure off, you know. And you know that's the one thing about all the racing; these things, pressure can get in your head. At least it does mine. And we've always been pretty good at the Canadian Nationals, but you know, without having that cloud over your head, uh, am I going to get in or not? You know, that uh, it's going to make it more enjoyable. There he is, that's Jared Zimberti. He wins round number one of the Northern Summer Nationals. How about a hand for Chris Steele? A great second place run tonight, Chris. You and Travis, good buddies, having a good battle there in the early going, but in the end, second, still pretty good with this class of field. Yeah, I, uh, I guess I screwed up once. I, I tried to block Travis on the bottom because he went under me the last restart, and uh, Jared got me on the top, so I just figured I'd stay at the top, and didn't, the bottom didn't look too good, so I'll take a second. Another good solid run for the 80, Chris Steele. Brian Howland down here as well, Tommy. Well, Brian, great run for you, uh, third. Can you be happy with something like that on a night like this when we've got some of the best guys here from all the divisions? Yeah, you know, we ran pretty good. We actually I slammed into the cushion up there in uh, one and two and it stuffed a bunch of mud in the right rear, picked up a nasty vibration about halfway through, but uh, the car still handled pretty good. It was just kind of a handful on the straightaways. Um, I gotta thank all my guys. They worked all, all night long. We had a U-joint problem earlier in the night. We had a, a crazy vibration then, too, so we... Uh, you know, we changed a whole bunch of stuff and tore that apart. So hats off to my guys. They gave me a good car, even though we were uh, working on that all night long instead of the setup. I still did pretty good. I'm happy with the car and happy with the finish. Congratulations, third tonight. Brian, we'll get you over there for one quick top three photo.